All right, let's do some leg anatomy. We'll start with the posterior compartment and then include the anterior and lateral compartment. These are one of my favorite anatomy labs because they're incredibly simple if you think about them in the compartment. You can think about these compartments as supplied by one artery, one nerve, and there are only two veins that you really need to know to do well on your anatomy exam. So let's start with these two veins. Here is the short saphenous vein. As you can see here, it is running in between the medial and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. Now it's called the gastrocnemius because that means belly of the leg and it forms the belly of the leg because it is kind of looks like a rectus. As you can see this kind of comes down, tapers off, and comes down uh, and this looks like the linea alba kind of separating it and that's why they named it the gastrocnemius because it looks like belly of the leg. So the short saphenous runs here in between the two bellies of the gastrocnemius or heads and then you can see here in addition you have the sural nerve. The other vein that we do need to see here is the long saphenous vein and this is incredibly high yield because this is one of the veins that is used for bypass procedures. So now let's return back to the muscular. So here is the gastrocnemius, and if we hide that, we can see directly under it is the soleus. Now soleus means base. It is directly under the gastrocnemius, so I like to think about it as the base of the gastrocnemius. If we continue to remove that muscle, and we can see a tiny, tiny little muscle here, and this is the plantaris. And the plantaris is sometimes called the fool's nerve because it has a very, very long tendon. You can see here as we follow it down, it starts to look very similar to the nerve structures that are directly around it. Do not be fooled. Know that the three muscles that insert at the calcaneal tendon here are the gastrocnemius, the soleus, and the plantar. All of these are involved with plantar flexion. Now, before we go to the last layer of muscles, the last three muscles remaining in the posterior compartment of the leg, let's look at some of the neurovasculature. So as we look at some of the neurovasculature, first we have to note that on the posterior thigh, there's going to be a biceps femoral that has a medial larger head and a lateral smaller head and we'll remove that. So here's the sciatic nerve. It originates inferior to the piriformis. Do not forget about piriformis syndrome and we will zoom in and this is a very very important part for you to pay attention because this is a great way very easy to memorize and understand the innervation of the lower extremity. So the sciatic nerve is the major nerve that innervates the muscles of the posterior thigh and the, with the exception of the short head of the biceps femoris that is innervated by the common fibular nerve here or perineal. So the, so the sciatic nerve is responsible for providing innervation to the posterior thigh and then the more distal part of the lower extremity by, by dividing into branches that will eventually innervate the posterior compartment of the leg, the anterior compartment of the leg, and the lateral compartment of the leg. So let's first examine this branch here. This is the common perineal or peroneal or fibular, many different ways to say this. As you can see here, this is the common perineal because they're or fibular because there's going to be another branching here. So the common perineal is going to branch into a lateral serocutaneous nerve of the calf and this is going to provide cutaneous innervation on the lateral aspect of the posterior leg skin. And it's going to continue to have a, another component that's going to branch here on the lateral aspect of the head of the fibula. So on the head of the fibula, it's going to branch into two nerves, the deep fibular nerve, and then it's going to also have a branch here that is superficial fibular nerve. Now this is a very high yield moment where you need to understand something. The superficial fibular nerve will innervate the two muscles in the lateral compartment of the leg and that is going to be the fibular longus and whenever there's a longus in the name you can bet there will be a brevis somewhere else. So as we zoom out a little bit and we hide the fibularis longus we can see there's a fibularis brevis muscle. Now note here how the deep fibular nerve is winding around the neck of the fibula and then piercing a muscle. It is piercing the extensor digitorum longus after winding around the fibula because it's going to innervate the anterior compartment of the leg. So the sciatic nerve that came out from under the piriformis is basically going to send branches to innervate the rest of the lower extremity. So I want to review one more time. The common fibular nerve here sends off a lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf and then, will, and then it will branch into a deep fibular nerve which is called the deep fibular nerve because it descends through more muscle coming from the posterior aspect. So it is diving deep in relation to the posterior aspect of, of the tibia and it also also has a superficial fibular branch that innervates the fibularis longus and fibularis brevis and also provides cutaneous innervation to the dorsal aspect of the foot which also gives off some dorsal digital artery some dorsal digital nerve branches to supply the dorsal aspect of the toe again this is very high yield you will need to know this we will see this again when we talk about the anterior compartment all right now let's talk about some of the vascular structures in the leg. So here we have the semimembranosus and you can always remember that this is the semimembranosus because it has a membranous like component to it. Not very well visualized on this diagram but here you can kind of see there's a little bit of a membrane from the transition of the red muscular fibers to the more fibrous looking membrane and then the semitendinosus is always sitting directly on top of it and has a very very tendinous insertion and then even more medially we have the gracilis followed by the sartorius. So we can remove these muscles to further help visualize this. So if we remove our semimembranosus we can see that there's another muscle here which is the ad ductor magnus again this is a large muscle hence the name magnus that helps adduct the leg under that you can see the femoral vein and 
and the femoral artery. When the femoral artery and the femoral vein are done piercing through the adductor magnus and they exit through the adductor hiatus, they become the popliteal artery. So right here at this junction between the femoral and the popliteal artery, we call this area here the adductor hiatus. It makes a lot of sense because once we have left that compartment of the leg, we are no longer talking about many structures associated with the femur. Now we're talking about popliteal fossa. So the popliteal fossa is here is this aspect on the posterior part of the knee. If it's in the popliteal fossa, we should probably call it the popliteal artery, right? And the same thing with the popliteal vein. Now, the popliteal artery will give off superior medial genicular arteries, superior lateral genicular arteries, inferior genicular arteries that go medial and lateral. And this is to supply a extensive anastomotic network to the knee. In addition, they are very difficult to visualize on your dissection, but they are also medial genicular arteries, and these are more inside the knee joint itself. So unless you go inside that knee joint, it will be very difficult to visualize. Now we can remove these to help better visualize the rest of the dissection. All right, so we discussed the sciatic nerve, and then we also discussed one branch, the sciatic nerve, which is the common fibula branching into the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf, and also providing innervation to the anterior compartment by sending a defibular branch and a innervation to the lateral compartment sending a superficial fibular branch. Now we can see that there is also a very, very large continuation of the sciatic nerve called the tibial nerve. This is not split into any anterior compartment or posterior compartment. That is why there's no distinction between anterior tibial or posterior tibial nerve. This is just the continuation of the sciatic that is on the posterior aspect of the tibia. It's called the tibia nerve. As you can see here, it gives off a little branch that is the sural nerve, and this provides innervation to the rest of the leg, in addition to some of the other branches, for example, the saphenous nerve. Under that, we return to the popliteal artery. So the popliteal artery is very unique in that it is defined by a muscle with the same name. So here, at the inferior border of the popliteal muscle, which is the most deep muscle that it lays directly on top of the posterior aspect of the knee joint, which serves to unlock the knee, defines the lower border of the popliteal fossa. So immediately upon passing the inferior border of the popliteus muscle here, we are no longer in the popliteal fossa and no longer will we refer to the popliteal artery that was a continuation of the femoral artery after it passed through the adductor hiatus. We're now going to refer it to as the tibial. So as you can see, there's one structure here, the anterior tibial artery that is named so because just like the deep fibular nerve, it is going to dive to the anterior compartment and hence the name is anterior tibial artery. So the anterior tibial artery will accompany the deep fibular nerve off the common fibular nerve to apply blood and innervation to the anterior compartment of the leg. Now, what do we call this division here that is not going anywhere? That is just doing that is just going to continue on the posterior aspect of the tibia. Well, we would call it the posterior tibial artery. Now it is unique because the posterior tibial artery is descending with a, now it is very easy to identify because it is descending with the tibial nerve and the posterior tibial vein. Now we can remove the posterior tibial vein to better visualize this course. So as, as you can see, the posterior tibial artery and the tibial nerve are descending down in between the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus. So this is also going to be something that you see on the anterior aspect of the leg with the anterior tibial artery and the deep fibular nerve are going to descend between the not flexor hallucis longus but the extensor hallucis longus and in between the not flexor digitorum longus the extensor digitorum longus. So lots of redundancy here on the anterior and posterior aspect. So the rest of the muscles we need to discuss are the extensor digitorum longus. This muscle is on the more lateral aspect of the leg and is going to wind down and cross on the posterior aspect of the medial malleolus to descend into the foot to insert on the digits to help extend digits two through five. Now another muscle here, this is the flexor digitorum longus. Now here is the flexor hallucis longer. It is directly on the posterior aspect of the fibula. So here's the fibula, the flexor house as long as it's directly on the posterior aspect of it. It is going to descend on the posterior aspect of the medial malleolus along with the other Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles. Tom being tibialis posterior, Dick being flexor digitorum longus, and Harry being the flexor house as long as. Now hallux mean toe in Latin. So this is flexing the toe and it's a long muscle, right? And this is because there's also a flexor house as brevis in the foot directly under the plantar aponeurosis. Here on the more medial aspect of the posterior leg, is the flexor digitorum longus. Now this digit, now this muscle tells you exactly what it does. It flexes the digit and it's a very long muscle. There's also a flexor digitorum brevis, just like there's a flexor hallucis brevis. And they are very, very close to each other in the foot.